Hi, this is Dr. Davis again. And today I'd like to talk a bit about prebiotics and irritable bowel syndrome. That's right, prebiotics, not probiotics. I made a previous video where I discussed probiotics, the microbes from natural fermented sources that help you to increase your good bacteria over bad bacteria. If you don't remember or haven't seen the video on the subject, probiotics can not only balance your beneficial gut bugs, but can directly regulate the immune system, decrease the effects of lactose or dairy intolerance, decrease cancer-promoting enzymes by bad bacteria, help with constipation, decrease upper respiratory and urinary infections, increase the cleansing ways of activity of the intestines, and can help you lose weight by decreasing inflammation. Not only that, they make vitamin K, folate, and short-chain fatty acids like butyrate that feed the cells of the intestines. That's a lot to do, and that's why we have a hundred trillion of them on our side working 24-7. But what if they're not up to the job? What if you've already replenished them with your favorite probiotic and you still can't seem to make any headway to turning your intestines into a healthy place to live? After all, there is evidence that after you take probiotics, the bacteria you installed in your gut will last only about a week. The reason for that is because you might have a leaky gut called intestinal permeability, or previous bacterial food poisoning, or intestinal inflammation from food sensitivities. There are so many reasons, but one of the most likely is that the good bacteria you do have are hungry and need a little help. It isn't easy moving your family and making a new home in the large intestine. You see, the bugs that already live there have really messed the place up. There are trash cans in the street and old broken down cars on dried out lawns. I think you get the idea. It's less than a welcoming place for your young family, and so you think about forgetting the whole thing and just moving along to the next town down the road. The probiotic generated bugs in your gut do the same thing. If they can't stick to the side of the intestinal wall and multiply, they just pass through without ever getting a chance to change things for the better. And one of the better options to get the good bacteria situated permanently in the little depressions or crypts that cover the wall of the intestine are prebiotics. These provide undigestible soluble fiber to support and encourage specific kinds of good bacteria. These are foods that the human GI tract cannot digest and so end up in the colon intact and act as food for our personal bacteria. Not only that, they act to stimulate the immune system of the gut providing extra protection from the bad bacteria. Now, prebiotics come in three basic flavors. Long-chain oligosaccharides that help the bacteria ferment the left side of the colon, short-chain oligosaccharides that ferment the right side of the colon, and medium saccharides that work in between. There's evidence that these prebiotic foods were eaten by our hunter-gatherer ancestors, and also that they have a significant presence in breast milk in the form of galacto-oligosaccharides, or GOS. Clearly, this is a necessary item for young children and adults. In fact, studies show that prebiotics increase magnesium and calcium absorption when needed, specifically the prebiotic inulin, oligofructose, and xylo-oligosaccharides can inhibit precancer cells and help control blood sugar and type 2 diabetes. Prebiotics also increase the short-chain fatty acids like butyrate in the colon and are extremely important in maintaining the cells that line the intestine. Commonly, I'll use these nutrients to repair the cell wall of the intestines that can be injured to the point that toxins and large molecules will travel through unchecked, resulting in inflammation and immune reactions. When it comes to the practical issue of decreasing the symptoms of IBS, prebiotics clearly can be effective. Unfortunately, this does come with the same warning I gave in a previous video on probiotics and IBS. It's about the condition where the bacteria begin to migrate up into the small intestine causing SIBO, or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. In that case, prebiotics should be avoided because they can increase the bacteria of the small intestine resulting in gas, pain, and bloating. Testing is usually required to separate IBS with the SIBO problem using a gut ecology profile, or a SIBO breath test, or even an organic acids test. Once we know exactly what is going on in the large and small intestine, specific dietary approaches or targeted supplements can be instituted to get things back to normal. 
There are several sources of prebiotics in nature, with Jerusalem artichoke, garlic, onion, or leeks leading the list. The good news is that it doesn't take very much to make a real difference. For instance, you only need about one-third of an ounce of chicory root or one ounce of dandelion greens per day to get six grams of prebiotic fiber. That's more than enough to get you on your way. If you're interested in additional information about natural ways to solve your IBS problem, please visit our site and subscribe to make sure you're getting all the updates and the new videos as they come online. And if you'd like to work with me personally, you can let me know there too so that we can get started as soon as possible. Health is on the way. Thank you.